now, the thing I want to do, we have like a bit of time left and we could get started with a project, but what I want to do is get a sense of what you guys want to work on. So I want to show a few different examples of the types of things that we can make. Um, and then just, you know, we don't necessarily have to decide now, um, but maybe before next class, you guys can, we can discuss it and maybe we'll vote on projects or we could do like a ranking or something like that. Um, and kind of decide on, on a few different things that we want to do. Um, and so uh, I'm just going to show a, a few different examples um, of things that we could make. And, uh, you know, if you guys have questions or want to talk about uh, how we would do it or something like that, we can, we can go over it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll just kind of go over a few different things um and then go from there so one of the projects that i often do that we've already seen a few examples of is just an interactive story um so you have like characters you have buttons that you click on and you just kind of go through a story um and so that's that's a good option um i think a good example we've seen we've already seen a good example of that um but we can go back here um and where was it oh that one's not here okay so yeah i mean this is like a really simple version of it but um let's see oh i don't know which oh there we go Oh, okay, so I can click on the hammer or this like spring thing. So this is a very simple version example of this, but it's basically like I have two options to click on and depending on which option I click on, it takes me to a different ending for the story. So it's sort of like an interactive story. Um, that's pretty easy to do. We'd probably do that in P5, um, which you guys have probably used before, but we might use more advanced uh, techniques in P5 to do that. Um, so let me put that as, uh, where should I put this information? I guess I'll put this in the MMP 310 channel because we want it, it to exist. Um, and maybe I'll put a poll in there eventually. So uh, project options. And let's see, the first one is an interactive story. And I'll put like, a, we may have to do like multiple polls for this. Um, I'll put like a book here. Okay. Um, oh yeah, maybe we can do one chat for each and then we can have like a ranking. Like you guys can put like a, a one, two or three or something like that. Um, okay. So another thing that we can do that is kind of in the similar vein, but like takes it a bit of a step further is doing a game, um, like a 2D game. Um, this is something that we've done, I've done a lot in this class because a lot of people wanted to make games. And especially before I had created the game design class, there wasn't really any other course in our major, in our department that actually taught game design. So that was something that I used to do a lot in these classes. Now there is an intro game design class, which a lot of you guys are aware of. You've, uh, some of you have taken it and some of you are taking it right now. Um, and so it's not, so now there is like that kind of outlet for that, but you know, we could still create a game in this class and focus a little bit more on the programming side of things. So um, I showed an example of like Asteroids game. Uh, the thing that we would use for that is, a, is a, a, a library that goes on top of P5, which is called P5 Play. Um, so let me show you guys what that looks like. And this is actually would be kind of cool because one of the reasons I moved away from using P5 Play a few years ago is because the person who created it, who's a really amazing game developer, but the person who created it stopped maintaining it, which means they stopped updating the code. So it wasn't working as the web was you know, changing. Um, but very recently, a few other developers have taken over the project and they've been making updates to it. So it's so it, you know it's it's kind of usable again. Um, so anyway, P5 Play is a is a library that sits on top of P5. So it's like a library on top of a library that adds physics and interaction and animation so that you can build a game in the browser. Um, so uh, let's look at some demos. Um, so let's see game. So 
the asteroids game that we created in that class is pretty much based on this, uh, more or less um, the same type of thing. Uh, maybe some differences. Okay, shoot. Okay. Uh, let's see. And so, yeah, you can see there's some basic images. These are actually just these like little sprites that are moving around. There's physics that control them. And then there's some physics that if we, if we run into something or shoot something, it, you know, creates a reaction. Um, so there's other games that they made. Uh, let's see. Pong. This is obviously just really simple. I don't know what the controls are for this. I guess it's just the arrow keys. Or no, it's the letter keys. Um, yeah, so that's pretty easy, but there's probably actually, uh, there's not that much code in here, but, you know, we could create something like that. Um, breakout is like when you click on the bricks, we could make a game similar to that. Um, see, tricky platformer. Oh, I guess there's a play button that I can use to reset it. So, oh, I can't step on this for some reason. So how can I get over? I guess that's just the trick. There's Maybe there's no way to win. Um, but yeah, so we can use that game engine on top of P5 to add graphics and animation and create like a 2D game. Um, so that's another option, and we'll we'll have to do multiple of these. Like we'll do a few different projects. I mean, we could work on one project throughout the semester if we all are interested in one project. But um, let's just put a little uh, game pad and put two D game p five dot play. Okay. Um, the next option. Um, another thing is like, these are just like options that I've done before and that I've thought about, but if you guys have like crazy ideas for other things that you're interested in doing, we can talk about those as well. Um, so another thing that we could do, this wouldn't be like the most exciting thing to me necessarily, but it might be, you know, for a lot of people who want to learn more practical, uh, web development skills, we could just make like a web app. Like we could essentially make Twitter or like something like Reddit or something like that. Um, so, you know. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's something that we've done in this class in the past. Let me see if I can find an example of, um, let's see. So it might be more similar to something that we would normally do in MMP 350. Um, yeah, like this is a good example of something like that, if this still exists. Uh, this is essentially like a Twitter, but this student created something where it's it's supposed to be about like meditation and you're like writing reflections. So we could make something like that. Like it would be more design oriented, but using JavaScript to create the interactions between the user and the website. Um, so that's an option. A lot of times people want to do that because it's like more practical maybe. All the stuff we learn is all the same stuff. Like code is pretty much the same regardless of what you're making, um, but that's another option. So for that one, let's do an app. Uh, let's just do, let's see. Um, I guess we'll just do an Apple. Let's do, let's see, website. No, website. Uh, internet. I'm not getting good emojis for this. Internet. Um, huh. Okay, let's just do, okay, we'll just do Apple for app. So do Apple. Um, web app, Twitter, or similar web application. Um, okay, so that's another option. Um, then uh, another thing that we can do, which you guys already saw a little bit of, is using 3JS. Um, so 3JS is a uh, 3D library for JavaScript. Um, I used to use it a ton. I haven't used it a lot recently, uh, but it's a really cool library and it's, it's hard to use, but there's, there's things that you can do to make it a little bit easier to use. So um, this is the, the site. It's sort of similar to P5 and it's essentially just like a thing that you put on top of JavaScript to make it easier to do other things, but it's still just JavaScript. So with 3.js, you can really make a lot of different types of 3D things. 
Um, let's see a good example. So this is a funny, goofy one. Um, oh, this is for AR now. This used to be, oh no, this is a new version of, where is that website? This thing. This is literally just like 3D characters, just like dancing to music and you can kind of like play with them. Uh, it's just kind of like goofy and fun. Uh, but you learn a lot coding this. Um, so that's like one kind of thing you can make with 3.js. Um, this is a cool like uh, portfolio website um, made in 3.js where this developer, who's a really good designer and developer, created his portfolio using 3.js. So it's like interactive. You're driving this little car around and um, you can choose like to look at different parts of his portfolio. Um, Uh, by like driving over here and then like clicking on them. Um, but there's also like all this physics stuff going on. This is obviously like a really complex project that we probably wouldn't be able to create in just one semester. Um, but we could kind of like learn the basics of something like this, or at least create like a scene like this or something like that. Um, so yeah, 3JS is really cool. Uh, I did some 3JS stuff one semester, but it's not on here, so I'll have to go find it and figure out where it is because I know it exists. Um, let's see, is there anything else cool on here? Um, this is like a 3D game. This would be pretty hard to make, but it's pretty cool. Uh, it's just like a frogger, but you're like a dinosaur thing. Um, so yeah, that's another option, a 3JS project. We'd probably make a scene, maybe add some stuff to it, maybe add some interaction to it. Um, so that's another option. So how do I represent 3D? Do I have like axes? No, I don't have axes. Um, do I have a cube? I oh, will do an ice cube. Good enough. 3.js. Uh, another thing that uh, I have not really done in this class before, but I think would be really fun is using a sound library. So I used Tone.js for music in my web projects. Um, and I can show you guys what that looks like. So Tone.js is another JavaScript library, similar to P5, similar to 3JS. You throw it on top of JavaScript and it lets you do a lot of cool stuff. So Tone.js is for like synthesizing audio in the browser. Um, you can also work with samples, but that's kind of the main thing that it does. Um, so some basic examples like Here's like a synth. Uh, it's just like a MIDI synth. You can just like play stuff on it, but you can also program like uh, loops and things like that. You can like change the setting. So we can like go into the synth and like change the oscillator um, to sound different. So it's very powerful. It's pretty cool. Um, I've been using it a lot recently. As I mentioned, I've been doing some music stuff. Um, you can also do a sampler. This is like a piano. Um, let's see, let's try step sequencer. So you can play like, you can write a like beat program. It's kind of quiet, but oh, we can change the tempo. So you could create a sequencer and let people like create their own beats in the browser. Um, let's see, what else can you do? Oh, animation sync, I feel like that's new. That's pretty cool. Um, there's effects, like we could do a ping pong delay. Um, so yeah, there's a whole lot of cool stuff that you can do with browser audio now that is really honestly very new. Like you couldn't really do it even like five or six years ago. And so Tone.js, there's a lot of, again, tons of libraries that do this kind of thing, but Tone is probably sort of the leading one. Um, so that's another option. Let's put like a music note and say tone.js project. Um, okay, and let's see. Just, oh, okay, another idea that would probably take a lot of time and be very complex, but might be really interesting. Um, you guys have probably seen like these games like agar.io, 
before. Um, even if you haven't seen this one, this is kind of like the original one. Um, but they're essentially these web games that are like networked um, where this is like a really simple version of it where you're just like this cell and you eat these other cells. And the bigger you get, the slower you are, but the easier it is to eat other cells. So, you know, those guys are bigger than me, so they would kill me. So I need to hide from them, but I could probably eat this guy. Maybe not. Uh, anyway, this is like this game. Uh, I forget when it was created. It, it was like kind of like maybe 10 years ago or something like that. But when it first came out, it kind of like created this paradigm of like, oh, I can create a networked multiplayer web game using really, really simple graphics. So part of the thing with the web, like you can't do like, you know, uh, Fortnite on the web or something like that, because for a lot of different reasons, but you can't really do like that level of graphics on a website and also have the communication going on. So what these games did is they took the multiplayer aspect of those types of games, but then stripped down the graphics to be really simple so that it could run in the browser so that you don't need like, you know, a really fancy PC or whatever um, to play the game. This would be hard to create. I've created games like this before. Um, you have to use like a backend, you have to use uh, like peer-to-peer -peer communication. So there's a lot more that goes into it. But if that's something that you guys were like really into, we could probably like just spend a whole semester doing something like that. Um, so that's another option. So what would we call this? This is like a web, let's call this a, uh, I'll put like a spider web and say like networked. 2D game. Um, let's see. So that's like one, two, three, four, five, six project options. Um, and so, yeah, we only have like 10 minutes left today. So we don't have to decide what we're going to do right now. But what I'd like you guys to do, and this is uh, a homework assignment, so you have to do this. So just go over at some point between uh, tonight and class on Wednesday. Um, and go to the MMP310 channel. Um, let me stream my Discord so you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, stream Discord. Okay, so all you have to do, go over to MMP310 channel. There's one, two, three, four, five, six project ideas. And what I want you to do is just react to these project ideas and rank them basically in terms of like how interested you are in doing these projects. So um, for example, um, I'll, I'll put all the reactions so it'll be easier. So uh, let's see, let's do start with one. 